There's a bit of a hidden hotkey in Photoshop that you probably haven't heard anything about. You certainly haven't seen it in the menus of Photoshop, but you will hear about it in this tutorial. It's a hotkey that's going to allow us today to create these really cool star trails by duplicating our sky 50 or 100 times, however many times we would like to duplicate it and create these long, bizarre, wild, incredible looking uh, star trails that you probably have seen in a long exposure astrophotography. The hotkey is the duplicate transform tool it's not something that gets used a lot. It's probably something that you maybe have never used before, but it's really cool. What it does and what it facilitates is something that I don't know if there's anything else in Photoshop that does quite this. Um, and when you find things to use it for and some of the stuff it can do, it's pretty stinking cool. We're going to take a look at how to create these long exposure looping star trails in Photoshop. In this tutorial, we're going to cover some of the pitfall pitfalls, some of the things you're going to run into, problems you may have and how to solve them. And we're going to do it all right now. Let's go. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Now we're gonna be doing a lot of destructive editing to our image. So you're gonna see me grabbing layers and just hitting Command or Control J to duplicate layers a lot. I just wanna get that out of the way uh, quickly because we're gonna be doing a lot today. Um, now, the first thing you're gonna do when you're looking at an image is identify areas that are gonna be problematic. The basic premise behind what we're going to be doing is duplicating the stars in these skies and stretching them on this sort of curve that follows a reference point. Um, when we do that, things like this streaking Halley's Comet will just turn a huge part of our image into just a white swath. Clearly, we don't want that. So we would want to get rid of that Halley's Comet. The same would go if maybe there's an airplane flying through the shot or the moon is up in the sky or things like that that you may want to either get rid of or cut to a different layer and preserve for later. Uh, just be cognizant of all that stuff. We're going to go ahead and get rid of Halley's Comet or whatever this is um, by using our patch tool. I'm going to set it to source right here. A diffusion of three is probably fine. Generally speaking, when you have kind of this fine texture. You want a lower diffusion. We're going to apply that rule when we use the healing brush here in just a second. Command or Control D to deselect. I mentioned the healing brush. There it is right there. We're going to hold down Alt or Option to sample the starry sky. I just have a large, very soft brush. 100 pixels, zero hardness. That's great. Diffusion set to one. Perfecto. And then I'm just going to come in here and just paint away. Just make sure the edges of uh, our old comet just kind of blend into the sky a little bit better. Something else I may keep an eye out for is if there's like particularly bright or sparkly looking stars, uh, things like that, I might go in and just kind of dab away. Uh, again, we're playing. Is it best to do this effect in the camera? Of course, it's always better to do this type of effect in the camera, but by doing it in Photoshop, we allow ourselves uh, a greater flexibility in terms of the customization we can apply to the effect, um, but the effect is never gonna look probably quite as good as you could have gotten in the camera, but there's still things we can do and it's a lot of fun. All right, so now that we've gotten rid of Halley's Comet, uh, the next thing we want to do is select our foreground and just pop it up onto its own layer. This is particularly important when you have something like this church building or whatever this is, schoolhouse, jutting up into the sky. If it's just a clean landscape, uh, it's a little bit easier to uh, deal with some of what we're going to deal with, but this uh, type of image presents its own set of unique uh, problems that we need to work through and that we're going to work through. Uh, as you can see here, like in this image, we get this dude kind of running and, uh, you know, that, that presents a problem that just a flat landscape doesn't. So the first thing we'll do is we'll grab our quick selection tool and we're just going to paint just a rough selection. Just grab the church, grab or whatever it is, this church looking building. We're going to grab this and uh, I want this little spire, wind spire, whatever it is here on top of it. I'm using my polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to hold down shift and just a real quick rough selection really does not have to be perfect at all. We're just looking to get a little something up there just so it doesn't get swallowed up. And just as I say, it doesn't have to be perfect. I realize I did really kind of a, a not nice job. There we go, something like that. Cool, and then again, we're gonna use that hotkey, Command or Control J, boom. We pop this up onto the foreground and this is the foreground, which is gonna sit on top of all of our spiraling tornado vortex of stars in the sky behind it. So all of our star business is going to take place on a layer below the foreground layer. Right now, that layer is layer one. We can rename it sky, whatever we want. Now, we could begin working on this sky layer. The essence of this effect is duplicate the sky a whole bunch of times and uh, begin stretching the stars left or right or both um, until we get this kind of spirally vortex effect. 
The problem with that is, is exactly what you're gonna see here in this image where I did that. Uh, you, you can see here the top of the mountains are also being stretched. Now it's a kind of a cool three-dimensional looking pixel stretch effect, but it's not what we want, not in this case at least. So how do we uh, fix that? And you can see here, if I shut off the foreground, it just looks like I've applied this crazy radial looking blur effect uh, to this one layer. And it's just a mess, it's sticking into our sky. We we do not want that to be the case. Um, and I took some measures to prevent it here in this image, but the problem is we have all of our falling streaking stars, but they just sort of magically are masked away as they get to our subject, which also is not ideal because that's not how stars work in real life. They don't say, hey, we are gonna avoid stuff that's sticking up above the horizon. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna work to fix that. And it's gonna begin with us selecting the sky. So I'm gonna hit the letter Q to enter quick mask mode. I am going to grab my brush tool. I'm gonna use a nice big soft edge brush again, maybe 300 pixels. Here's where it's really helpful to have a tablet. You basically just wanna paint with the color black and paint over everything that you want to select. And you can take a minute to do this. Um, by the way, you can use like the, the lasso tool and you can make a selection and fill that. Uh, but for the sake of keeping this tutorial simple, just using the brush tool is fine. And just taking a minute here and, and creating a nice soft edge selection of the bulk of our stars while avoiding the building is exactly what I want to do. And as you saw, I just took particular care to just make sure I really cut around the building. And it doesn't even matter if it doesn't look perfect, just having it definitely well clear of the edges of the building, that's what we want. This brighter stuff in the sky down here, we're gonna avoid that. I'm not worried about getting it all the way down to the horizon, maybe you are. I'm not in this case. Uh, and then in order to convert this to a selection, just hit the letter Q, bing, we've got our selection. Now we have our sky layer selected. We're gonna hit Command or Control J to copy the sky up. And I'm gonna call this sky base, something like that. Uh, and there's something very, very important we need to do now. So we avoid this effect Oh, so we avoided this effect here where it just looks like the, the star trails just stop around our subject, which in this case would be this school or church building. And that is, we need to, if I uh, alt or option click on the eyeball for the sky base layer, you can see this is what we have on that layer. But there's this whole area down here that's just missing stars because that's where that church building, school building situation is. We need to fill this with stars. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look great or any of that nonsense. We still want it to look decent though. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to just use my rectangular marquee tool like so, select this entire area, and we are going to use the power of Photoshop's content aware fill. We're gonna come into here and you could really spend a lot of time fussing with this if you wanted. But again, this is not gonna be the finished image. This is not gonna be the finished result. We don't need this to look perfect. We could sample from that part of the sky, that's probably fine. We could add a little bit more of the sky if we so wish, whatever. Allow it to make the change. Sometimes it can be fun to come and play with color adaptation, high, very high, whatever. Uh, again, this does not have to look perfect, it just has to look good enough. All of the stuff other than the actual stars and the placement of the stars, we're gonna drop all of that away in just a moment. So let's just go ahead and hit okay and live with whatever we get. And we can see indeed it looks it looks truly awful, uh, but it's put it up on this new layer for us. We can do a number of things here. I'm probably just gonna grab my eraser tool by hitting the letter E and just fade the top edge a little bit because it was a, a sharp selection. Uh, so just kind of fade it together. You can really ignore all the dark stuff. It really, really doesn't matter. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna take both these layers and merge them together. But again, as I've been doing, we're just gonna duplicate our sky base layer. Just take that copy. We're just gonna shut it off. We're gonna leave it down here on the bottom. It's gonna be sort of a bail us out or, oh crap, we messed it up. Uh, one of those type of layers. So select both of the layers by selecting the bottom one, shift, hold down your shift key, select the top layer, hit command or control E to merge them together. And I'm just gonna get rid of the word copy. And this is our sky base. If I turn on the foreground uh, image, you can see here is our church building. We're missing a chunk of the sky. That's because we still need our original sky turned on behind all of this. And now you can see how truly awful it looks. How do we make it look better? Well, by selecting sky base and setting it to the blend mode of lighten, just like that. Now, one thing we may wanna do uh, is there's this really harsh edge on the bottom. We might just wanna take our eraser tool and just soften that edge. I mean, the color is not gonna come through, but 
why not? It's one of those things where just, why not? Uh, we're gonna set this to the blend mode to lighten. That's very important. And you can see it all blends together just perfectly because it's just taking those stars. All right, now we're gonna duplicate this layer. So we're gonna call this sky base. I'm gonna call this uh, right because we're gonna swing the stars to the right first and then we'll come back and swing them to the left using our original sky base. So sky base right, here's where the hotkey comes into play. We go edit, we go free transform. And you might wanna really zoom in to see what you're doing here. Um, and we're gonna set a reference point here using this little reference point uh, option. I'm gonna go with the bottom center. Um, now you could just drag your little reference point Right, you see this little guy right here? You could drag this anywhere you want. Wherever you drag it in the image, that's where the center of your spin is going to be. The reason that I'm using one of the nine default options that I have is because we're gonna swing the stars both left and right. So I wanna make sure I have the same exact dead on reference point for both of them so the stars line up perfectly. So I'm gonna go bottom center like that. And here's where zooming in is helpful. And this just, it all depends on how big your star is and how big your image is, but you wanna set a rotation value. I'm gonna go with a 0.1. That's probably a little bit too much. You see how there's a tiny bit of a gap between the stars? So maybe I'll go 0 0.08. I'm sorry, not 08, 0, 008. So 0.08, still too much, 0 0.05, maybe something like that. The smaller distance you cover, the more times you're gonna to have to duplicate this transform. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, it has to do with file size. It's gonna make file size big quickly. We're gonna go ahead and commit this change. I'm gonna zoom out. And now we have started the process of shifting these stars. Now the secret hotkey is Command Shift Option T. That's Control Shift Alt T. I'm gonna hit it probably 35 times here, maybe 40 times, and it's gonna duplicate this layer while also applying that same 0.05 degree angle rotation that we applied to the original image. So just give your Photoshop a, a minute or two to do its thing. And you can see the effect that has been generated. We actually created 53 layers. Now, these stars are super duper intense. Um, we also have some issues here where they look like they're, they're not all the way to the edge. That is what we take care of by swinging this effect back to the left. We also have some issues up here at the top maybe where they don't look quite right. Again, that should also be rectified a bit by swinging it back to the left. But the main problem is here, uh, there's just too much, there's too much star shower going on. So I'm actually gonna just select the top star layer. We're gonna get rid of all this work that we just did. So I'm gonna hold down shift and go all the way back down and get even get rid of sky base right because we started tilting it. So that reference point now is going to be different. So let's turn on our original sky base. Let's duplicate that again, command or control J. I will once again name this sky base right. How do we combat the fact that there's too many stars? Well, of course, by getting rid of some of the stars. And we do that by just applying a levels adjustment directly to the layer. We're not gonna do a levels adjustment layer. We're gonna go image adjustments levels while having our sky base right layer selected. Now we just want to increase the blacks in this image. Uh, and by doing that, we're just gonna drop away some of the stars. Now, I'm actually gonna hit cancel because it's really difficult to see what we're doing without having the layer set to the blend mode normal. Now that we have it set to normal, I'm gonna open up levels again, and we're going to begin darkening this and just preserve those biggest and brightest stars. Something like that. Sometimes this looks really funky. It might take a few times going back and forth, experimenting until you get it perfect. But let's go ahead and set this back to the blend mode of lighten. We're gonna go ahead and hit Command or Control T to open up free transform. Again, that bottom center anchor point, and we went 0.05 for our rotation. I'm gonna go ahead and check that. And then again, I'm just gonna hit this, you know, 40 times or something like that. And you can see we have much the same effect. We still have those same problems on the left side and the top right of the, our frame, but the star effect is toned down a little bit. I like it. Uh, we did 46 copies. I'm gonna select that top layer, scroll all the way to the bottom, shift select the bottom layer, and then just hit Command or Control G to group them up. So this is our star trails as they swing to the right. Now we would do the exact same thing here uh, with our, oh, oops, sky base right, the, our original layer. Let's actually, let's bring that into here as well. Just drag it right up into that layer group. Uh, now we're gonna do the same thing for our sky base that's gonna swing to the left. So let's duplicate sky base, and I'm going to name this sky base layer sky base to the left. And 
I am going to apply that same levels adjustment layer, and we're gonna do that using the hotkey, not just Command or Control L to bring up levels, but Command Option or Control Alt L. I'm gonna set this back to normal. I'll shut off the stars on the top. So I'm gonna go Command Option L. It's gonna bring up levels with everything exactly as I just previously used levels. I will hit OK. I am going to go and say, give me that lighten blending mode again. We're gonna go Command or Control T. We're gonna go ahead and set our reference point there to that bottom center, of course. And then here, we're just gonna go negative 0.05 and hit the little check icon. And now the job is the same. Duplicate this a bunch of times. Command Shift Option T or Control Shift Alt T and let's see how it looks. All right, that looks pretty decent. I did 48 copies of it. It's super quick and easy. Let me hold down shift, select all the layers, command or control G to group them up and then turn on our other group. And you can see this is the effect that we get. Now, it's still pretty heavy, particularly through here. There's just a lot going on. It's really, really bright. Now, if you look at long exposure astrophotography, the sky does get really bright because you're just absorbing a lot of light as these stars slowly uh, ticker their way across the sky. A few things we can do here. You can shift select both groups. You could keep it just like this if you wanted, of course. We've got a 2.2 gigabyte file size because we've got a ton of layers. Uh, one of the things I like to do is either go layer, smart objects, convert to smart object. That would take all those layers and group them into a smart object. You're not gonna save a ton in terms of your file size, but you'll be able to begin doing more blending options. Uh, or if you just want the most destructive uh, method, just hit Command or Control E. It's gonna take both those layer groups, mash them together into one merged layer. It's gonna shut off that light and blend mode. So go back and turn on light and again. And at this point, you can do all sorts of things. You could apply a levels adjustment right to this layer. I would probably use a levels adjustment layer in this case and just uh, clip it to the layer beneath using that little uh, clipping icon. And then you could do something where it's like, hey, get rid of more of the dark stuff, maybe tone down some of the white areas, blend those a little bit better. I don't really like the way that looks. You could double click on the group uh, group one layer and use your blend if sliders. So you could say like, hey, in the underlying layer, I'm gonna hold down alt, I just held down alt or option, click that slider to split it and begin fading away as, uh, as my light streaks get closer to light stuff in the background image, fade that away. Or maybe the dark stuff on this layer, let's fade some of that away. And you can see, it doesn't look like we're doing much but we're definitely taking the edge off of some of uh, that stuff. You can play around with your color channels. You could say like, hey, shut off the red color channel. It makes everything very cyan-y. Uh, you can get rid of the blue channel as well and get this crazy like alien green effect. All sorts of things you can do. Reduce the fill opacity a couple ticks if you want to begin continuing the blending process. Um, but really, most of the work that you're gonna do uh, or, or that could make the biggest change here is really what did you do in terms of that levels adjustment, you know, way back when we applied the levels adjustment just to the sky before we began all of the duplicate transform business? Uh, the more stars you get rid of, uh, the more sparse or more dense this effect will look. You can, and by the way, you can do the opposite where you really crank up the number of stars and everything that you're seeing in the sky. So just something to think about there. Uh, but this is how you would go through and create this long exposure star trail in Photoshop type effect. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss new Photoshop or Illustrator or other creative type uploads. And if you do Instagram, give me a follow over there. My Instagram is down in the description below. We're rebuilding it because it just got hacked and I lost all my followers. It stinks, it stinks. It's not all that exciting over there right now, but hopefully by the time you're there, it's much cooler and there's a lot more that's going on there. Uh, yeah, and I think that's gonna be it for this one. Thank you for sticking around. I really appreciate you for being here and giving this tutorial a watch, a listen, however you do your thing. For creating star trails in Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Petvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.